Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I'm Scott. You're in the prog corner. And today we're talking about 1968, a year of great music, but also a year of great political turmoil and social upheaval throughout the world. You had the Soviet Union invading Czechoslovakia. You had the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. Mm. Do the do, my friend. The 747 was introduced by Boeing in 1968. Uh, the Tet Offensive began in the Vietnam War. Tommy Smith and John Carlos gave the, the sign, the Black Power sign on the podium in Mexico City after winning the bronze and the gold. Uh, Richard Nixon was elected in November. North Korea took uh, the USS Pueblo and its sailors hostage and a whole bunch of other stuff going on in the world. But we're here to talk about the music. And 1968 had some great, great tunage. And uh, yeah, like I said before, these are the 12 songs from that year that got my little kid brain going. Not the 12 best songs of the year or anything like that. Not the 12 proggiest songs that led to the formation of our beloved genre. No, no, no. We're just talking about the 12 singles that I had in the house and I listened to and I was, well, 68, I was five, six years old. So these are the 12 that really got my juices flowing at number 12. No, 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 no. It's Nobody But Me from The Human Beings. What a ridiculous song. Originally, this was an Isley Brothers track from 1962. It didn't chart at all for them. Uh, this version got to number eight. Apparently, these guys are from uh, Youngstown, Ohio. And uh, one reviewer said that this was the most negative song of all time. It has 102 no's, 46 nobodies in the lyrics, and apparently one yeah thrown in for good measure. The band uh, never really did anything else after that. At number 11, it's the 1910 Fruit Gum Company and Simon Says. This was their first hit, uh, their first big hit, and their, and their biggest hit. The next year, they did 1, 2, 3, Red Light, and in 19... Uh, 69. Also, they did uh, Indian Giver, but Simon Says was their biggest hit. The 1910 Fruit Gum Company, uh, not even really a real band, I guess, but uh, this was Buddha Records, and uh, these guys coming up with uh, this bubblegum stuff that was going on. The song was written by Elliot Chiprut. Um, these guys originally apparently were from New Jersey, and they called themselves Jekyll and the Hydes. Um, when they got this song, they kind of changed the rhythm a little bit. If you notice, it does sound a little bit like Wooly Bully by Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. But uh, I, I love bubblegum pop, and we're going to talk some more about bubblegum as we go on here at number 10. Song written by Bob Dylan. It's Quinn the Eskimo, uh, although a lot of people call it uh, the Mighty Quinn. I guess the real name is Quinn the Eskimo. I don't know. Uh, Dylan... Uh, wrote this and recorded it for the basement tape session, but it never saw the light of day until uh, 1970's Self-Portrait. Um, we think Dylan probably wrote this in honor of Anthony Quinn. He played an Eskimo in the movie The Savage Innocence. The song got to number one in the UK, number 12 in the US, and I find it notable for uh, the flute solo in there. That's actually Klaus Vormann doing that, which is very cool. Um, a lot of people have done cover versions of this song. Klaus, uh, Crocus, The Grateful Dead, The Hollies, Leon Russell, Fish, Noel Gallagher. Uh, it's a classic. At number nine. Yeah, we talked about the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. Well, here comes a song called Abraham, Martin, and John by Dion. Yeah, that's the same Dion that did Run Around Sue. I guess he grew up and wanted to talk about more interesting stuff. But this song was written by Dick Holler. And if that name rings a bell, it's because we just talked about him a couple days ago. He's the same feller that wrote uh, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron. Uh, the song hit number four in the U.S., uh, primarily due to the uh, non-stop airplay of the song on Chicago's WLS. Uh, I guess uh, Dion 
He used to be part of that Dion and the Belmonts. He's from the Bronx. Later on, he uh, found Christ and uh, got into a lot of Christian music. But Abraham, Martin, and John, such a great song. I love it. I love it. So sad. At number eight, come listen while I play my green tambourine. It's the Lemon Pipers. Yeah, these guys were a bubblegum band, but uh, they were trying their hand at a little bit of psychedelia, and it totally worked. This song was written by Paul Lika. Um, the Lemon Pipers were originally from Oxford, Ohio, which is home to Miami University. Not the University of Miami. Yeah, the other one in Ohio. Um, there was a whole lot of birds influence going on with these guys. Uh, the song was written by Paul Lika, who I guess was a part of the whole Brill building uh, group of songwriters. It's got that sitar on there. It's really great. I always love that song. And number seven, we're going north of the border in Steppenwolf with the Magic Carpet Ride. Yeah, I, know, I guess a couple of these guys were American, so they're not a pure Canadian band. Uh, this was the single they put out after the pusher and before rock me so they were on a hot streak at this point um the song was written by john k and uh bass player rushed and move uh it hit number three in the u.s and it's just such a great song apparently john k uh has reported that the song is actually about his uh love of the high fidelity he was getting from a new stereo system and maybe there might have been some recreational drugs involved in the songwriting process as well at number six, the heaviest song of the 60s, without a doubt, it's Blue Cheer and Summertime Blues. This song blew my mind as a little kid. It was so distorted and those guitars were so chunky. I'd never heard anything like it. It absolutely opened the door for heavy metal and the heavier sounds that we would hear in the 70s. Um, Blue Cheer was a San Francisco band formed in 1966 by Dickie Peterson. Obviously, this song is a uh, Eddie Cochran cover, and everybody and their monkey's uncle has done a version of it. Obviously, Eddie Cochran did a version of it. Alan Jackson had a number one uh, country hit with it. The Who, uh, Hendrix used to do it live. Rush did it on their Feedback Covers EP. Uh, T-Rex even did a version of it. It's just incredible, and the Blue Cheer version is, without a doubt, the best of the bunch. That was number six. At number five, yeah, we're going to talk about some more bubblegum pop. And it's Yummy, Yummy, Yummy from the Ohio Express. This wasn't even a real band. This was just all a bunch of session musicians coming under the banner of the Ohio Express. Um, apparently, the song was written by Arthur Resnick, who's the same guy who wrote Under the Boardwalk. <laughs> Wrap your mind around that one. And uh, Joey Levine, who uh, was a jingle writer, who his most famous work is probably uh, Sometimes You Feel Like a Nut, Sometimes You Don't. You know, hey, these are just facts. Facts are facts. Um, the Cars, Fountains of Wayne, uh, both of those bands have referenced this song in material. What's really odd about the, the revolving door of musicians that recorded under the auspices of the Ohio Express, you had Joe Walsh. And you actually had every member at 10CC at one point <laughs> recording for those guys. Just a really weird... Uh, Weird stuff. You don't see that kind of stuff anymore. At number four, this is for Jeff Shilka and his sister, Judy, who's up there right now. She left us a year ago, uh, Monday, I guess. And uh, we're talking about Judy in disguise. Yeah, I had to include this one for her. It, it's uh, John Fred and his Playboy Band. Um, this song came out in October 1967. Big shocker. It hit number one. It took Hello Goodbye by the Beatles off the chart. Uh, written by John Fred. His real name is John Fred Gourier. Uh, he's from Baton Rouge. He left us in 2005, but uh, after his music career was over, he really got into uh, coaching sports. He's a big basketball guy. I guess he played basketball at LSU, but what a great song. I guess this is kind of a response to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Judy in Disguise with Glasses. Yeah, I get it. I get it. At number three. Yeah, we're talking about the Beatles. Why not? It's Lady Madonna. Uh, this came out February 6th, uh, 1968. It hit number four uh, on the U.S. charts. 
This was kind of a return to the Beatles, more traditional song structure after some of their, you know, more recent stuff had been a little more experimental, a little bit more progressive. This song is just kind of a boogie woogie song. Kind of sounds like Fats Domino a little bit. Um, the label wanted to release Across the Universe here. I guess there was an earlier version of that, um, but uh, I guess they... Uh, overrode them and uh, went with Lady Madonna. Um, this was their last single on Parlophone. Their next uh, single would be on Apple, and that was Hey Jude. Um, the, uh, the stereo version is only available on the album, but uh, you want to get the mono version because it's so much better, I think. I, I prefer all the mono stuff anyway from the Beatles. I hate all that extreme panning that Martin was doing at number two people and I love you. Oh man, a lot of people might not remember this song. Um, it only got to number 14 in the US, but this song's got a weird history and I just love this track. Um, it was originally written by Chris White, who's the bass player for the Zombies. They put it on a B-side in 1965. The song was uh, whenever you're ready and uh, it did not chart at all so when this thing came out a couple years later by uh, this band called people some band from california i guess uh, the zombies were a little salty about it a little jealous because they uh they didn't get a chance to have a hit with it um it hit number 14 like i said uh, but this song had a weird life in that uh, apparently some DJs in Southeast Asia found the B-side um, and started playing the song. So there was a little bit of synergy for it. And then People, a band led by uh, Larry Norman, who you might know, uh, who later went on to become a big, big prominent figure in Christian rock circles. Um, he was a part of the band. Apparently he and a couple other members got kicked out because everybody else was into Scientology and he wasn't having it, but he had a great career later after people broke up recording over a hundred albums of uh, Christian rock. But I love you is such an amazing song. If you don't know it, check it out right now. It's incredible. But at number one, yeah, this had to be my number one for 1968. It's status quo and pictures of matchstick men. This song was my favorite song for probably about a year or two straight as a kid. And I listened to it over and over and over. That simple little riff. Uh, and then you got that flanged effect going on that we heard on Ichiku Park last year. And now it's coming back here. A lot of bands are starting to utilize that. Um, Again, the mono version is the way to go on this. The stereo version doesn't have all the wah-wah and the guitar, so it's not nearly as good. Um, this was the first single uh, for Status Quo as Status Quo. Before this, they were known as The Status Quo. I guess the psychedelic... Uh, you know, direction really didn't work. Their next single bombed, and in very short order, Status Quo became more of a straight-ahead uh, rock and roll band, a pub band, or whatever. Um, Camper Van Beethoven does a really good version of this song if you're looking for a more modern take on it. But, uh, yeah, that's Pictures of Matchstick Man by Status Quo. I love that song. My favorite song from 1968. Tomorrow we're doing 1969. And uh, we will be wrapped up with 60 Singles Week. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, the numbers seem to indicate that you do not. <laughs> So we shall see if uh, we're going to do the 70s next week. At this point, it's looking like it's going to be canceled. Hopefully, this video will do a little bit better than 1966 and 1967. Yeah, because I'm fickle like that. I'm vain like that. If I don't get enough views on these videos, I change directions. I, I let the analytics dictate what I do. And uh, you guys know how I go about things. Anyway, I love y'all. I, again, I hope you're enjoying this because I'm loving doing this. This has been great. These are like some of the most, my most favorite videos I've done. And it's just a damn shame that nobody's watching it. But anyway, I love you guys. Peace. See you soon. Well, see you tomorrow. <laughs>